So today we're doing projects 1 through 10 from the SNAP circuit system. And the very first project is the electric light and switch. There's what it looks like. The objective is to show how electricity is turned on and off with a switch. And here's the circuit already completed. We use four of the two connectors, our S1 sliding switch and our L1 2.5 volt lamp. And our three connected there and of course a three volt source. So with the circuit off, it's a closed circuit. There's no electricity flowing. The lamp doesn't light up. Now when I close the circuit, the lamp comes on and it's nice and bright. And we call it this a closed circuit. Electricity flows through the positive, the negative, through the switch, through the lamp, and that's what lights it up. You turn the switch off, and now it's a closed circuit. The lamp goes off. So that's project one. So let's move on to project two. So now in project two, we now have a DC motor in the switch. And that's what our circuit looks like in our objective here is to see how electricity is used to operate the DC motor. Now the second we move the switch down to the bottom and we put the DC motor in place of the two and a half volt lamp. Now there is a polarity marker on here. There's a positive sign right here. You need to make sure that positive lines up with the positive on your source. So on your battery you'll have a positive marking. You want to make sure that your motor's positive marking matches up with that. You can put the fan on top. And again, with the circuit off, nothing happens. I turn it on. Okay, it comes on. And you should be able to put your hand over it and feel air blowing on it. And it indicates it's working. I get the fan spinning. I turn it off. And it stops. So that's project two. So let's move on to project number three. So in project number three, we have a sound activated switch. There's what our circuit looks like. And our objective is to show how sound can turn on an electronic device. Now again, we got our three volt source and we need two of our two snaps, a four and a five and a three snap. We use our music integrated circuit, our whistle chip, our switch, our red and black jumper cables and our speaker. So when this circuit is turned off, of course nothing happens. Now when you turn the circuit on, you should and probably will hear music play out of the speaker. But again, remember, this is called a sound activated switch. So in this case, the whistle chip, which is right there, is connected to the trigger port of the music IC. Now when we tap on it, that sends a signal to the music IC, which then tells it to play the music. So anytime the whistle chip picks up a tap or anything like that, something audible, it tells the music IC to start playing because it sends a signal to it. And of course, when you turn off the circuit, nothing happens. So that's how project number three works. So let's go ahead on to project number four. And here we are doing project number four, and it's adjusting the sound level. And here's what our circuit looks like. And our objective here is to show how a resistor affects the volume or amplitude from the speaker. So as you see, we have a circuit very similar to the one before. We've had to replace the five and the fours that were here with a five there and a six here. So everything moves over one to make room for our speaker and our 100 ohm resistor that we've connected in line with it. So again, with the circuit off, nothing happens. But with the resistor there, what do you think happens to the volume of the speaker when I turn the circuit on? Let's see. Notice it's a lot quieter now. Now, of course, Project 3's original purpose still works. Tapping on the whistle chip to activate the music, I see. But the reason that the speaker is quieter is because 
when you put this resistor on the speaker, there's less current going through the speaker. And because of that, the amplitude or volume of the speaker is less because there's, of course, not enough current going through there to generate a loud enough sound. So you get that quieter sound. And if you put a higher ohm resistor on there, say a one kilo ohm resistor, it'll be even quieter, probably to the point that you can't hear it at all. So that's how resistors affect that. So that's how project number four works. So let's move on to project number five. So here we are with project five, and it's a lamp and fan in series. That's what our circuit looks like. And of course our objective is to see how the lamp and the fan work in series. So with this we have our switch. We've got three of the two connectors here, our motor, our two and a half volt lamp, and then a two connecting that. And again, the motor has the positive end over here because our positive is here, so we want to make sure the polarity is correct. So again, we looked at how the fan and the lamp work by themselves when we did project one and two. So what happens when we put them together one after the other on the same path? Let's see what happens. There's a couple things you notice here. Number one, when the switch was turned on, the lamp started out bright, and then as the motor started up, it got dim. And if I feel the air coming off the motor, there's not a lot coming off of it like it did by itself. And again, looking at the lamp, the lamp is dim. So in series, these things are sharing that one path there of current. And because of that, their output power is being reduced. So we're looking, that's how our series circuit is working. So let's look at project six. Now here we are with project number six, lamp and fan in parallel. That's how the circuit appears. And our objective here is to see how the lamp and fan work when they're connected in parallel. Now as we saw in project five, they were connected in series, one after the other on the same path. And their power output was reduced. So what do you think happens when we put each item, the fan and the lamp, on their own current path? Let's see what happens now. Now you notice the lamp is bright, and there's a lot of air coming off the fan. So by having their own path, there's not a voltage drop across the wall. It's getting the full three volts coming out of the source. Now the drawback is there's more current being drawn from the source because of that now that they're both operating at their max power. So that's seeing the difference between project five in series and project six here in parallel. So let's move on to project seven. And here we are with project number seven and we're dealing with light emitting diodes. That's what our circuit looks like. And our objective here is to show how a resistor and a light emitting diode are wired to emit light. Now in this circuit, of course, we have our D1, which is our red light emitting diode. We have four of our two snap connectors, a 100 ohm resistor, and our slide switch along with our three volt source. We slide it on the switch, and our LED lights up, and it lights up red. Now. You may think, well, why is there a 100 ohm resistor in this circuit? Well, LEDs are sensitive to high current. So you generally use them with a resistor in the circuit to limit the current going through there so to prevent any kind of damage going to it. And we'll see this in other circuits where we use different strength resistors to help limit the current going to the LED when we start working with more and more current and voltage. But that is how project number seven works. Now let's look at project number eight. And here we are with project number eight. Now it may not look that much different, but we're dealing with one direction for light emitting diodes. There's the circuit, but our objective is to see how LEDs only allow one way current. Now again, it's pretty similar, but this time we flip the LED around now, I didn't mention it in the last project, but there is a polarity mark on here. And there's the positive sign. And as you know, the positive is over here, so it goes around this way. So this is technically the wrong way. So 
if it lit up in project 7 is it going to light up here turn the switch nothing happens and the reason for that is because light emitting diodes like I just said are one way devices they only permit current to travel in one direction it cannot travel the other way and again that's indicated by the polarity but also it's the reason why diodes on electronic diagrams have this arrow on them that indicates the path of current they travel so if the current is traveling the wrong way against this arrow this diode will not light up so that's how it shows how one way current works with the diodes so that is project number eight so let's move on to project number nine so here we are with project number nine a conduction detector that's what our circuit looks like and our objective here is to see what kinds of materials are conductive if they are the LED will light up now it looks just like project number seven. All we've done is taken out the slide switch. So if I find something that's conductive, say our electric motor is conductive, current will flow through it and light up the LED. If I have something like the whistle chip, which we use as the trigger mechanism for our music IC, this is actually high resistance, so it's got very little conductance. And as you see, the LED does not light up using it. In fact, yeah, I can't even tell it make it trigger. So, and again, the human body is high resistance too. Even though it's conductive, it's got such high resistance it does not conduct enough to let current flow through. And if I use something like the speaker, well, that's conductive too. And the LED can light up using that. So, that is how project number nine works. It's simply a conduction detector. So let's move on to the final project of this video, project number 10. So this is the final project in the video. Project number 10, it's our Space War Alarm Combo. That's what our circuit looks like. And our objective is to combine the sounds we get from our Alarm Integrated Circuit and our Space War Integrated Circuit and be able to use items like switches and photoresistors to manipulate the sound effects. Now this is the most complex circuit of the entry level circuit so far in this video and so basically we're using stuff like a photoresistor a push button switch we've got our two sound integrated circuits there again the alarm and the space war we've got a speaker and our two and a half volt lamp and then the whole thing is turned on and off we have our slide switch and jumper wires help connect it all together on that side so let's turn it on and start manipulating the sounds. So right away we get some sound effects from there. We see some response from the two and a half volt lamp. I wave my hand over the photoresistor. And you can hear the sound effects changing. I can also press the button. You can also hear the sound effects change with that. Now this pulsing is a constant thing. The pulsing is coming from the alarm I see. All these other sound effects are coming from the space war I see. Let me turn that off. And there you go. That is project 10. All it does is combine the alarm and space war integrated circuit sounds into one output that we can both visually see on the lamp and hear on the speaker and we can manipulate what it sounds like by changing the inputs to them through the photoresistor and the push button. So there you go. That is projects 1 through 10.